Well, hi everybody. It's uh, as you can see, John White. I'm um, SharePoint MVP and a SQL VPS. Uh, work with a company called Unlimited Viz. You'll see the logo up there a bit. Um, and we specialize in uh, forms workflow, but uh, primarily in business intelligence solutions. So that's what I'm talking to you about today with uh, with uh, some Power Pivot and Power View content. And Jimmy's, I don't. Oh, here we go. All right, show my screen. So bear with me, and I'm going to get my screen sh shared out here. And I want to share for that up. And is everybody seeing our pretty Microsoft-style marketing slide? I'm going to assume so, unless I hear otherwise. All right, great. Um, so I'm going to, in, 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 in fairly short order, I hope, uh, run through a, a series of uh, kind of how-tos, a little bit of a, a, a feature demonstration of uh, both Power Pivot and Power View um, as they relate directly to, to SharePoint. Uh, if you have any questions throughout, I, uh, if you want to post them in the panel, I, as I mentioned to Jameis earlier, um, I can take them as we go. I'll, I'll get you to interrupt me because I won't be watching that panel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so to start with, I've, I've just got two slides I want to run through, and most of this is going to be demonstration. I want to talk a little bit about business intelligence in the Microsoft world because there's a whole lot of confusion. There's no real one product you can buy from Microsoft that uh, that does BI, uh, so to speak. There are there are products in the marketplace. You think of uh, certain names like Cognos, etc., and it's like there's this product you buy. In, in in reality, they're the same. They're in the same boat with a collection of tools. But it's uh, it's marketed kind of a little more cohesively. With Microsoft, we have we have a whole pile of tools, and it's not necessarily clear as to where and when to use what. So what what this slide shows you, I think, is the real strength of Microsoft's business intelligence stack. Uh, if you look over, we've got those these three pillars here. Microsoft likes to use three of everything. Uh, we've got the personal BI, we have the team BI, and the organizational BI. Business intelligence has been around for a uh, for a very long time. Um, it used to be called decision support way back in the day. Um, and, and what we were always talking about was this right-hand side, the organizational BI, where you essentially had these guys in white coats up on the mountain, if you will, uh, and, and business users would go and ask them questions, and they would go away and crunch numbers and come down with, uh, with, with, uh, with the reports and the answers. Uh, and that was that's actually uh, a, a very good model from a uh, data quality standpoint and a single... Uh, single point of truth uh, context, but it wasn't always the most responsive, unfortunately, and uh, a little bit like driving while looking in the rearview mirror. You don't necessarily, you can't necessarily react to where you're going. You can find out what happened after the fact, but it's, it's not great at uh, letting you adapt on the fly. And as a result, as, uh, as uh, things like Excel became more pervasive in the enterprise. We had people just going and doing it themselves. And that's over here on the, on the left-hand side of the screen with, with personal BI. And they would basically connect to whatever data sources they could. They'd mash the data up themselves. They'd do some analysis and then email that spreadsheet out to their friends or associates. And you'd have you know, the spreadsheet version 1, the spreadsheet version 2, spread, you know, version 3, et cetera, et cetera, with different analyses. Um, and it was very, very responsive, but it's very, very difficult to uh, to determine which one was necessarily the right one. You'll have meetings where people are arguing over, you know, where did you get your numbers from, that sort of thing. To bridge the gap somewhat, uh, we have the, what's in the middle, Team BI. It, it, and that, that's really what Microsoft's strength is. It's, it's, it's what they have going for them primarily. And the interesting part is the, uh, the technology that underpins that is the technology we're all here to talk about, of course, which is SharePoint. And with SharePoint, we can take those spreadsheets, share them out with our, our, our organization uh, or our team, and uh, have a single, single, uh, single point of truth. And if they become something the organization relies on, maybe we can move them up to the organizational BI. It becomes a, a nice, smooth transition from one end to the other. And that's, again, where I, where I really think uh, Microsoft's strength lay, lay. And the products I'm talking about today with uh, with, with um, Power View and Power Pivot, they really, really speak well to this model. So I'll re reference back to this slide here, and just so you can quickly see, you know, the kind of it's not as cut and dried as you, as you might say. I got Office and SharePoint and, and, and Server in the three different stacks. There are aspects of some which bleed over to the other. Particular, 
particularly when you look at something like reporting services, which is actually a SQL Server product, but if you look at the reporting services add-in for SharePoint, it kind of lives in the middle tier, and it kind of makes it a team reporting tool uh, versus full-on reporting services, which is highly architected and when, when, it, uh, when it's built um, by the IT department or, or whatever, uh, it can be considered an enterprise tool as well. Power Pivot is over on the left-hand side. It's an add-in for Excel, um, but it also sits in the middle because when we move that spreadsheet up into SharePoint, it becomes Team BI. And we can do the, uh, some of these analysis at, at the team level. And then we can ultimately take our Power Pivot models that we build and move them into full-on analysis services where they, uh, they can be managed uh, and scheduled, et cetera, by the IT department. All right, so just that's just I was trying to set the stage as to where this all lives. I want to walk through kind of the life cycle, starting from scratch of building one of these power pivot models, moving them into SharePoint, and then using it to create a, a power view report, which is actually a reporting services product, believe it or not. So I'm just going to click here, and what I have is a is a fairly fresh site. I've got uh, I've got some stuff built already to save us some time. This presentation usually takes an hour or so to run through completely. So I'm going to short circuit a couple of things, but we've got a we got a fairly fresh SharePoint site here, and what I've got is a database, and this is real data that's a couple of months old now, of a, uh, the census that was uh, just released here in Canada a couple of months ago, um, and we've actually it's public data, which is why I like to to show it in a demonstration, and I want I'm interested in a couple of aspects, um, and this census data is broken down by. Um, electoral boundaries. So when we elect uh, a government here in Canada that we have MPs from um, from ridings or districts and you know they'll, they'll go up to the national government etc. So we want to break it down by it's reported based on that basis. Actually the data in here is reported at a more granular level than that at the poll basis but we're in a poll is a, is a like there's about 200 polls per one of these ridings. And we want to report that we basically want to uh, relate that data so we could look at uh, ultimately election results and things like household income and languages. And I'm going to show you how, how we would go about doing that. So to start with, we're going to fire up Excel. Everybody's fairly familiar there. Um, and when we've installed this Power Pivot, it's an add-on. It's a free add-on that can uh, can be downloaded anytime, and it it, it, it it shows up here as a tab in Excel. So we click over here on Power Pivot and we start the Power Pivot window. Okay? And the first thing we need to do with Power Pivot is go and get some data. So I'm just going to create from database. And you can see that we've got an, uh, another uh, number of options here. We can pull data from SQL Server, from Access, from Analysis Services, but we can also over here on the right pull data from a report. So if we have published already a reporting services report, we can go get data from it. Or we could go out to the public Azure Data Marketplace and get data. In our case, I'm just going to go to SQL Server to get our data. Our server name is Nautilus SQL. I'm going to use Windows Authentication. I'm going to do a drop down. And you can see that same database I was pointing out before. And I'm going to hit Next. And I'm going to select uh, from a series of tables. So um, I've got a I've got a whole pile of stuff here in my in my uh, database, and I'm interested in a couple of things. I'm going to be interested in these districts. I'm going to be interested in uh, the provinces that are uh, that these districts are in. Provinces, of course, the same as a state. Uh, and then I'm going to come down here, and I've got some views built, uh, basically to make life easier. Um, and I'm interested in household income, so I'm going to take a view of the household income. And I've got some views on language. All right. So we could do a straight uh, data import, but let, we want to make things a little more efficient, a little more readable for people. So I'm just going to call this table districts. So give it a friendly name. And I'm going to filter it out. I don't want all of the data that's in that table. So at this point, I can decide, no, I actually don't need the district ID. I do want the district number and the province ID, but I don't want the district ID. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to drop down here and do the same thing with provinces. Preview and filter. And I don't need this quotient. So any extra data I don't need, no, no point in bringing it into my model. And I'm going to come down here and give it a much more friendly name than V Household Income.
and the same thing, only there's an awful lot of t uh, data in this view that I'm not going to need. And so I'm just going to deselect all of them, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick population, which is the number of households, the class, the income class, which is how it's reported by Census Canada, the sort order, and I'm going to be relating all of this stuff back to districts, so I'm going to need the district number. Okay. And we're ready to go here. Finally, we're going to do the same thing with language. Preview and filter, same thing, except now we're going to take population, classification, sort order, district number. But if you look here under classification, we've got kind of a mixture of these classifications, and some of them aren't mutually exclusive. It doesn't make sense, but that's the way the data comes in from Census Canada. So I don't want to pull anything that's going to swamp um, uh, data, so I'm just going to pull a drop down, and immediately we get a list of all the unique values in our in our table. And I'm going to decide I do not want to pick. I don't want to pull in English because that's going to swamp any of my uh, minor uh, languages or French. And there's also multiple responses, which is kind of a different category altogether. And finally, single responses. So I'm only going to pull in the data that match the items I've, I've selected there, and I'm going to click OK. And now I'm ready to pull the data in. I'm going to hit Finish, and it's going to pull the data in. So you can see there's 308 of these districts across the country. There's 11 provinces in Canada. And you can see there's, it's, pulling, it's already pulled in 668,000 rows of household income. And we have to wait here just a second. Almost there. When I'm in a room, I usually ask anybody if they have any jokes at this point. Okay, so we've pulled in 2,189,000 rows of data, which um, I would normally stop at this point and say, uh, is anybody kind of impressed by that? Uh, Power Pivot will let us pull in things like hundreds of millions of rows of data without blinking. I'm going to hit Close. And the neat part about that is, I, if I pop into that, that language table, you can see it's fairly big. You can see down here we've got we're looking at right now number record number one of two million one hundred eighty nine thousand, but you know there's nothing stopping me from really quickly iterating through and you can see um, where we're at you know I just click there that's where we're at in the data set I could filter this data set out if I wanted to just look at the Arme or uh, sorry select all and then just look at the Armenian result or I could sort based on district number uh, largest to smallest, whatever that may be, and you can see how quick that was, and we're acting on that kind of data. That's the real beauty of Power Pivot is that it lets us analyze large amounts of data with the, with, with, directly with Excel, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I want to build a pivot table based on this model. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have to go over here um, to, to start with, I, and I'm, I've got this table called districts. Well, I'd like to pull all of the information about the district uh, right into a single table. Uh, and I'd like to have the province show up. Well, all I have here is the province ID. What I want to have is the province name. So to do that, I'm going to have to relate the district table back to provinces. So the first, the one way I can do that is by simply creating a relationship. Say district, the, uh, from the district table, the province ID should be related to the provinces table province ID. Okay? So once I've created, uh, once I've done that, I can go over to this column here, and I can do just like in Excel. I hit the equals key, so I'm building like an Excel uh, Excel formula. It isn't actually Excel. It's a it's a formula language called DAX, D-A-X, but it's an awful lot like uh, Excel's expression language. So if I hit equals, I can type in related, give it the name of the table, province, provinces, and then you can see the type ahead we get here. It, it knows that I want to pull province name in. I just hit end bracket, enter, and bang, that entire column is updated with the, with, the, with the name of the province. And I can just simply rename this column because, again, I'm designing a model that's going to be used by end users. I want to call this province. Okay, that's that column done. Now, the other thing I want to do here is I want to combine this district number and district name into a single field for people to pick. 
Uh, that's not, I'm sure that everybody on the call has had to do this at some level, this sort of thing at, at some level or another. So I'm, again, just going to hit equals. And just like in Excel, I can hit this, hit space, the ampersand, space, dash, space, ampersand, and then I just point and click on the district name and hit enter. And bang, the entire column is calculated for me. I'm just going to rename this column as well to district. Okay, once I've done this, I don't need any of these three columns anymore. So I'm going to right click, I've selected them all. I'm going to right click on them and say hide these from client tools. All right, that's great. So now we also have this provinces table, but we don't need it at all because our district is, uh, has been updated with, uh, with province, so we're going to have a single area to select from. So I'm just going to right-click on it and say hide the whole thing from the client tools. Okay. Now we've got some other things we want to do. Um, we've got some data we need to relate back, and we could go and create the relationships the same way you saw it, and that's actually the only way you could do it with the first version of Power Pivot. But I'm using the Power Pivot that's from or available as a SQL 2012 product, and we have this thing called the diagram view in it. And when I select diagram view, I can bring in my household income table, and if I scroll over here, I can bring over my language table. And all I have to do to relate these guys back is highlight this, drag, and drop it on the um, term I want to relate to, and the same thing with language. So I've, I've just created my relationships. And I also happen to know that I'm not going to need a number of the fields in either one of these, household income. I, I, uh, I'm not going to need to see population. You'll see why here in a second. I'm not going to need, need to see sort order or district number. So I'm going to select those and do that same hide from client tools here and here. All I'm interested in is classification in one case and the income class in the other. So I'm going to right click on these and I'm going to hide these from the client tools. Okay. So one more thing we need to do, I'm going to pop back to the data view to do it, is go into the household income. I want to treat this population as a measure. That's why I hit it, because I didn't want any chance of power pivot thinking it's a dimension. Um, I'm going to come down here and just say, I want to auto sum that. So it says sum of population. And I know these are, are households, so I'm going to call them that. So I'm going to type in households up here. If you don't know, didn't notice what I was doing, right up here in the, in the formula bar, I've typed in households. Okay, and that's good. And I'm going to come over here to say language, uh, do the same thing with languages. So under population, I'm going to hit auto sum. And I'm going to say call this speakers. Okay, and enter. So what this does is it builds um, a, uh, a measure, and the measure will always display what the, what the aggregate total is for whatever is selected. So when, if we pick any number of these classifications, you'll see how many speakers are within, uh, within each classification or within whatever classifications we have selected. So our model is ready for a quick first test. So what we'd like to do is create a pivot table and a pivot chart. So I'm just going to go up here to pivot table and say I want to build a, a horizontal chart and table. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say I want it to go in an existing worksheet. So I'm just going to put it in the first worksheet that we have. Click OK. And bang, if you've ever worked with pivot tables in Excel, this looks an awful lot like it. The only difference is we, is we get this special section for vertical and horizontal slicers. Okay, I'm going to take that, the bar and just drag it over here so it's the first sheet in the, uh, in, in the, in the workbook. And I'm going to come up here, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to start with provinces, and then I'm going to have, have districts. So you can see how this breaks down from a, from a relationship standpoint. So the province of Alberta has these districts in it. Province of British Columbia has these districts in it, etc. And I'm interested in household income, so I'm going to open that up, and I want to put income class here in the column labels, and I want to put households here in the sum of the values. Okay. So you can see here we've got a breakdown now of all of our um, of all of our uh, uh, household income classes and the number of households within each riding that are in each class. We do the same thing with the chart. Well, it's going to be a bit different. I'm just going to have a simple chart here that's going to give us um, the, uh, the income class on the x-axis and the number of households on the y-axis. And there we have it. Now, we want to break down and maybe do some analysis by province and district. So I'm going to create a slicer. 
same way I had before. And I'm going to throw that in, in slicers vertical. So province and district. So you get an idea. So what we have is a, is a little pivot table. This is obviously for the entire country. And from here, we can do things like, I want to just look at what the numbers look like for New Brunswick. And you can see everything updates accordingly. OK. That's great. There's a couple of problems with our model, though, right off the bat, if, uh, if you haven't noticed already. Um, we can see our classification is sorted from uh, 10,000, 100,000, 20,000, et cetera. So that doesn't really flow properly. So we'd like to be able to sort these, these uh, categories a different way. And if we look over here at our numbers, they aren't all that readable. I'd like to, I'd like to get these with commas at the, at the thousand separator, et cetera, et cetera. And, and previously, you know, with Excel, you're going to have to mess around with the actual items and, and get those working. One of the ideas of this new model is that uh, we can actually make those changes at the on the model side, and they'll, that'll reflect throughout anywhere this model gets used. So I'm going to pop back over here to my Power Pivot window. And I'm going to go in here to my uh, household income section. And I'm going to highlight the measure I've created. And I'm just going to simply say, I want this format to be a whole number. There's not ever any fractions. And I want to use a comma. Done. Same thing over here for language. My speakers, we haven't used it yet. But I want to make a whole number. And I want to use commas. OK, fairly straightforward. Now, finally, I don't like the way the income class is being sorted. So I can select this entire column. And then I can pick sort by column, and I can just choose to have it sorted by, conveniently, oddly enough, a sort order column. So I'm going to click OK there and do the same thing over here for languages. Sort order column. And OK, we're ready to go. I can pop back into my main Excel screen. If you look up here, this is we now see power pivot data was modified. I can click the refresh button. And my chart updates accordingly. And if I scroll over to the right-hand side, we've got 1,000 separators. All right. So I'm just right now, I'm going to save this uh, spreadsheet right off to the file system. So I'm going to save it as SP Shop Doc. And click Save. And once I do that, the reason I'm saving it off to the file system is so that I can show you this. Here's the file I just saved. And you can see the size it is. It's two and a half megabytes. You remember how many rows of data we had. Power Pivot is highly, highly, highly compressed, and it needs to be because it's all completely operating in memory. That spreadsheet contains the data, not just the data model. We're not reaching back to the to the source database all of the time. It's actually got all of those rows stored within it. So what do we want to do right now? Well, we want to put that and share it out with uh, our coworkers. So we're going to need to create a repository in SharePoint to do that with. And to do that, I'm just going to hit Create. I'm going to go to my Libraries list. When you've installed Power Pivot for SharePoint, which is on the SQL disk, and you activate it, you will get this Power Pivot gallery as a type of a library. So I'm going to pick that, and I'm going to pick, I'm just going to say Pivot Gallery. And I'm going to create it. Fairly straightforward. And because I've already got the file, I'm just going to pick Documents, Upload, Browse. So I'm going to pick SP Shop Talk and OK. And away we go. So what's, uh, if I, I'm just going to click off of this so we can get a quick refresh so you can see something. And I pop back to the library. See this little hourglass here? What it's doing is it's actually reaching in and, and building a, a little thumbnail of, of what the spreadsheet looks like. But from here, if I click on it, we see the spreadsheet. Now you'll notice we're in the Office web application. We're not, we didn't launch Excel or anything like that. But uh, also from here, I could just decide I want to see this one riding or district. Au séjour. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice it's taking a little while. I got an hourglass. Let's just let this finish. And bang, we're filtered based on that. Or if I pick Fredericton in New Brunswick, et cetera. You can see um, our, 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 our spreadsheet is updating accordingly. Well, you'll also notice that now that I'm clicking, it's, it's going much faster. Why is, why is that? Well, I'm going to come back over to here. 
and I've already connected. But just to demonstrate how it works, I've connected to the to Nautilus SP, which is my SharePoint server, backslash PowerPivot, which is a special instance of basically when you install PowerPivot, this instance gets installed. And what it is is really an instance of analysis services. You can see right here, Microsoft Analysis Services. And if I hit F5 and open up database, you'll see SP Shop Talk Sandbox. And what it's doing, the first time I, cr uh, I click on one of these, uh, on, on, on any of my slicers or I interact with my workbook, it's actually going back and building. I don't want to call it a cube, but you can think of it as a, cu uh, as a data cube on the fly for me. Okay? So I, I need to speed things up just a tad here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit faster. I'm also going to skip over. I'm just going back now, and you should see there's our thumbnails that have been, that have been built for us. So I'm now going to jump ahead a little bit to a slightly more complex model. And what you can see here is, I'll, I'll just open it up in the web application, so I'm not going to uh, fire up Excel, but what you can see here is we've got the concept of electoral results in here as well. So you can see right now, this is for, uh, there's an election last, last year in Canada, so I, I pulled that information in as well and related it all together. They're two completely different data sources, but I can slice and dice on the same sort of data, and I've also got the languages information that we've pulled in here as well. Okay, so if I pop back here, what I can do with one of these uh, uh, models that have already been completed is I can come up, if I've selected it, I can come up here and click on this, uh, uh, this icon here. Hey, John. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got a question here. Okay, I see it. So when it refreshes data, is it going back to the original source data or just the data in the, uh, in the Excel worksheet? It's going back to the data in the Excel worksheet. So uh, t it's actually, that's a great question at this point. Of, uh, I wasn't going to get into this, but on the right-hand side here, you, you see manage data refresh. So if I pick this, I can basically go in there and tell PowerPivot on SharePoint when to go and refresh its data from the original source data. All right? And that's different than if we were using analysis services because analysis services would handle that for us. And if we were to, to take this model and promote it to analysis services, which I doubt we're going to have time to show you how to do today, but I'll, I, I can certainly speak to it. Uh, analysis services has a whole infrastructure around doing that sort of data refresh on, on, on demand or on schedule, et cetera, et cetera. Power Pivot for SharePoint will let us set up a number of options on that. All right, and if that doesn't answer the question, we'll, we'll come back to it too. So I'm going to just click here and create a Power View report. So basically what's happened here is someone who's familiar with the data has built a model for me or for my team. Another team member can now come, to the, come in here, take this spreadsheet and say, I want to create a Power View report. And in just a second, right in browser, we get this screen up. And this is PowerView. And PowerView installs with Reporting Services 2012, if you install it in, Share, uh, um, in SharePoint integrated mode. <laughs> we could do a part two. Um, absolutely. It's actually fairly straightforward. If we have time, I'll, 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 I'll get to it. Um, but uh, so I wanna, what I want to do here is build a nice little dashboard that's a, that's a, a workup of, of a riding of a, any particular riding and allow users to pick which riding that is. So to start with, to let them pick, I'm going to go into this uh, geography dimension. I called it geography in, in the pre-baked one, it uh, looks like. And I'm just going to pick province. So the first thing I do is select province. And it's going to go out there and boom, those are all my provinces. And so it's starting to build a chart. Well, I don't want it to be a chart. I want it to be a slicer. So I'm just going to click slicer. From the uh, from the from the ribbon, okay. If you saw that, and then I'm going to click off of the slicer, and I'm going to pick district, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I want two slicers, province and district. I'm going to make district thinner, and I'm just going to move it around here on the screen a little bit. Move it down to about here, move the bottom down. the The idea of Power view is to make it very, very easy to do these. I want to call them analytical reports. They're not really proper. I wouldn't call them reports. I wouldn't compare it really to reporting services itself. But these are so you can slice and dice and move around and play with the data. So now I've got two slicers built. What do I want to report on? Well, I'm just going to click here and I'm going to open up my household income. And I'm going to want to see, first of all, I want to see my income class and I want to see my households. So I've just clicked on those, those, those measures. And then uh, from here, I can say, oh, I want that expressed as a bar graph. So I'm just going to click there. And I'm going to drag that over so it's a little bit wider. That makes sense. And I know there's a little more data there, so I'm going to drag it down. And there is my household by income class. 
Same thing, I'm going to pop down here for languages. And I want to have my language classification and my number of speakers. I'm just going to change the layout a little bit. Again, come down here, bring this guy down. Drag him over. Just laying the format out. And this one I just want to be a standard column and graph so we can see how that breaks down. Okay? And finally, we want to have electoral results from 2011. So we've got that up here. And what I want to do is use the logo of the party and the number of the votes that that party got. I want that sum of votes to be sorted from largest to smallest. Make that a little bit wider. Bring this up a little bit. So obviously what you're looking at right now are the, are the national results from 2011 in Canada. Uh, but if I want to, I, want to, I can see what the provincial results were across Canada. That's pretty easy to do. New Brunswick, you can see you know, it changes from place to place who wins, who loses, etc. Or I could break that right down if I, you know, say pick up, pick New Brunswick, I could pick uh, Acadie, Beausejour. So at the same time, I'm seeing who won, who lost, but I'm also seeing what the breakdown of the income class and the languages spoken are. Now, how long did it take me to do that, right? That's, that's the beauty of, of, of Power View. I'm just going to call this our uh, writing profile. And I keep calling them writing because we call them writing here in, in Canada, but I'm the, I think I'm the only Canadian on the, uh, on the call, so sorry about that. So I'm ready to go. I'd like to share that out to pe uh, with, with people. Well, I can do this a couple of, and I'm going to do this here in, in just a second. But one thing I do want to point out to you is I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it today, but I can say File, Export to PowerPoint. If I do that, I can actually save off a PowerPoint file that I can use in a presentation, and it can be live too. I can be slicing the data, uh, slicing and dicing the data right from within PowerPoint during a presentation in full screen view. But I'm going to hit Save. So save as, and I'm going to just call this writing profile. It's going to go back to my power, uh, my my pivot gallery, and I'm just going to hit back now because I'm in my browser. And there's you can see the model that we built right here. All right, so that's a, it's a quick little analytical tool that lets us work with um, uh, models that have been built by people who are more, f more familiar with the data. Um, so because Daniel asked it, I've got a couple of minutes. I'm going to just show you roughly what it looks like, and I'm not going to run through the whole thing. But if I pull up SQL Server Data Tools, sorry, what it looks like to promote a model that's been built this way now, but it, uh, fully into analysis services. So I'm pulling up SQL Server Data Tools, and this is something that comes with 2012, SQL Server 2012, and I'm going to create a new project, a new analysis services project. So you can see a bunch of the different project types that we can work with. I'm going to pick Import from Power Pivot, and I'm just going to let it be Tabular Project 1, and click OK. And then it says, what do you want to pull from? So I could reach out to SharePoint and get it directly, but I could just pull from. I'm going to pull POP uh, Model Results Complete, because that's the one you just saw in Power View. And you can see down here we're loading it in. This takes a second. Might address, is, you know, I don't know if there's any outstanding question. Okay, so I'm going to do this and then I'm going to process it, uh, process the model. Now you'll notice there's no data in here like there was in Excel. And what that, basically what we have to do is go and get it. Uh, it could have pulled the data in. It, it poses a security risk. That's what it boils down to. So if we go down here to the model and we say process, I'm just going to say process all. And this is going to take a second. So it might be a good time if there's any questions. I'm just trying to see any. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think I don't see any new ones. So that's all right. I think, I think uh, Mark had a question before he left, and um, I'm not sure if you answered it before about um. If I guess the Power Pivot is free add-in in Office. Power Pivot is a free, free add-in. I'm actually going to get this get to this in just a second. Um, uh, you need Office 2010 is exactly right. That's he's bang on with that. So anyway, okay. So we finished processing. We pulled in all of the data, and bang. So you can see what effectively looks like the Power Pivot add-on for Excel. But we're here. We're actually in Visual Studio. 
and we're building a full-on model in analysis services. And this is different than you know traditional cube design, which you're you're working with the, with the absence of data. Here you can actually see some of your results as as you're working on it. That's one of the nice advantages to doing this. It's basically a, we mere mortals can build these analytical cube. I, I shouldn't call them cubes because they're not, but analytical models. Um, uh, and not, and not have to wait for basically a, uh, a you know a cube design wizard to to build this stuff out for us, and it can be very usable. And once it's in analysis services, we can manage this appropriately. You've got all the right IT controls. We can we can create perspectives and all of those wonderful things. And when we're ready, again uh, for Daniel, you just right click on this guy, you deploy it, and off it's going. I've, I've pre-configured an analysis services server for us. This one's called Tabular Project One because I had no originality whatsoever. But once we're once we're done that, I, I'll, I'll let it finish. Now it's going to take too long, and I don't want to tie everybody up on, on that. But once we've done that, we could basically connect to that cube with Excel that doesn't have Power Pivot, or we could connect to anything that would normally connect to analysis services and work with it as if it was a full-on cube, an analytical model. Doesn't matter what. All right. So that's most of the demo. I just want to get to the uh, then quickly to the last couple of slides, which is essentially what do we need to do all of this stuff? Because I was showing you a lot of uh, a lot of different pieces and a lot of different parts to start with to build what, build these models. You'll either need the SQL Server data tools. You can do it directly in Analysis Services, the same way we did it with Excel. That's the beauty of it. Um, but if we want we want to use Power Pivot, we need Excel 2010. It is a free download. To be able to share this stuff out through SharePoint, we need SharePoint 2010 Enterprise, and we also need um, uh, SQL Enterprise. Oh, sorry, SQL Enterprise. If you're using SQL Server 2008 R2, or if you're using SQL Server 2012, you can use the BI edition. There's a special SKU that has all of the BI features for us. Um, strongly recommend using the SQL Server 2012 BI edition. Setting up Power Pivot for SharePoint is a whole lot easier in that version. For Power View, you need, again, SharePoint Enterprise. You also need SQL Server 2012. It doesn't exist in 2008 R2. Uh, it, will, it is available through the BI edition, and when you install reporting services, it, it, it's basically a byproduct of reporting services, you need to install reporting services in integrated mode. It does not work in standalone mode. The beauty of this, though, is if you saw what we just did was we built an analytical model in Excel. An end user could have built that, moved it up to a team, had it vetted out by the team, could have been modified, etc. And then the same model is used to promote right up into analysis services where IT can work on it. Um, common sort of skill set across the way, not a lot of wastage in terms of, in terms of resources. So that concludes my presentation for the day. Any questions? Uh, you have a couple of them, and I okay. think maybe some of them have been answered with your last slide there. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need Kerberos for the authentication between uh, between program pro, uh, platforms? Absolutely not. This is something I didn't talk about. Um, Power View and Power Pivot and the new analysis services uh, tabular mode are using something referred to as BISM, the Business Intelligence Semantic Model. Implicit in that is a way to avoid the requirement for Kerberos, so we don't have to worry about the double hop problem. What effectively is happening is, is the, the, the credentials, I actually have a blog post on this, um, or, or some, of the, some of the issues about setting up uh, uh, PowerView uh, with this. But effectively what is happening is, is the request has got the identity of the user making the request bundled within it. It's, when, when the connection with the back end data or the analysis services is made, it's using the services credentials to make that connection. But when it's executing the query, it's doing that with the effective permissions of the users who made the request. So no, you don't need Kerberos. Uh, can we be running SharePoint in SQL 2008 and still run PowerView in 2012? The answer to that is yes. But what you're going to have to have is reporting services from SQL 2012. And you will typically, if you're going to be installing uh, reporting services in SharePoint integrated mode, it's a good idea to have that installed on, if you've only got one SharePoint front-end server and one SQL server, 
what you want to do is put your reporting services integrated mode on your SharePoint front-end server. Don't put SharePoint on your SQL server. So what that also, what the, the, the nice side benefit of that is I could be running SQL 2012 reporting services on my SharePoint server and still be using SQL Server 2008 for my database server. Absolutely. I, I do that. Uh, can the bar chart in, in Power View? It's absolutely interactive. Uh, so the question is, can the bar, bar chart in Power View be inter interactive? I didn't show you this, but absolutely. Now my data doesn't really interrelate like the 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 the, the categories. I'm not. It was all very different data sets, so we're only relating back through the um, districts that I was picking in the slicer. But if they are interrelated, if I pick a bar in the bar chart, everything on the page is filtered by that bar. There's some good demos out there on the net. Uh, um, that, that show that. Okay, I think that's the end of the questions that I can see. So far, any other questions? Well, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn the presentation then over to you, Jimmy. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, John. Oh, well, thank uh, you very much. It's it's a fair amount of material to to fire hose in a few minutes, so. <laughs> Uh, just giving any last seconds, even though um, while I'm turning the screen over, if there's any more questions for John, you can definitely ask them. Let's see here. All right. So I want to thank John once again. He always gives uh, great presentations, uh, so clear and um, very easy to understand. And um, if you need to go back and to uh, reference it, we will put it up on to the, um, the SharePoint Shop Talk site as well as the YouTube channel um, by next Monday. And uh, we have about... 10 minutes like or so, I guess a little bit less than 10 minutes or so to ha take live questions uh, from the audience, uh, from the members. Um, we have our panelists still with us, uh, Paul Linick, John, as well as, oh, there's another question for you here, John, before we move on. It says, do end users need Office 2010? Absolutely. So do end users need Office 2010 installed to view pivots published to SharePoint? Absolutely not. They don't even need Office 2010 installed or Office installed of any version. Uh, hmm. You could be you you could be connecting in on an iPad, quite frankly. And yes, that does work. Um, and and use those very same pivots. Everything's rendered out through proper HTML in the Office web applications. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Wes, for your question. So uh, we have our panelists ready for any other live uh, general SharePoint questions, anything that you're working on um, today and that you might want to uh, ask the panelists, panelists about before we, uh, we close shop. Let's see here. All right. I don't think we have any questions. Let me see here. All right, no worries. Uh, we will reserve questions for uh, next week uh, when we have our, another SharePoint Shop Talk, a live question and answer. And uh, we hope that you all can join us next week. And thank you once again, John and, and Laura and Paul, our panelists, for, for joining us. And hope to hear from you all next week. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, <Lauren. laughs> Thank, thanks for having me. It's also all that all that BI stuff is so overwhelming. So I, I'm a little tiny less over overwhelmed now. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's the whole point of, of, of Power Pivot. <laughs> yeah. That's that's beautiful, excellent. I'm, and I'm sure you'll knock it in the park with books. So. Now I'm kicking myself <laughs> for installing SQL Standard when I was intending on putting Power Pivot on this test server. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> I've only rebuilt the server about eight times already, so one more time is not going to... You, you can actually just change your license key through the setup. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. All right. Thanks. <laughs> good luck. How do you know all those... Um, do oh, you study like, that uh, DAX, I guess you call it DAX formulas? I actually, you know don't, I, I actually don't know it really well. <laughs> I just know it enough oh. to do that. No, it's it's basically it's basically Excel. Yeah, you, you, there's 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 good books on it on it out there. Okay. But I wouldn't call myself an expert. Yeah, I always get so confused once I get past you know some and and you know like the easy things, but uh, I don't it's know, a lot. Start, it's yeah. just like Excel for it's just like Excel formula language. It's the okay. same idea. Yeah, that's the whole point of it, and and that's the beauty of it. You don't have to have you don't have to know um, 
Oh, now I don't. Now it's not going to come to me. But uh, the the full on cube uh, language is, of course, I should know it. I should know it off the top of my head, but I don't. But you don't have to know that. It's a different language than if you're working with OLAP cubes. <laughs>